is Lillian Kiefer and uh, I work as executive director here at uh, Panos Institute South in Africa. I am 40 years old and I've been working in my position for the past six years. So when I started I was 34 and I'm growing with it. Um, I live here in Osaka in Ibex Hill. And uh, a bit about PANOS. PANOS is a regional communication for development organization. The work that we do is to generate information and use it to advance social change. So we work across a range of themes. Uh, our first theme, which is the core theme for the organization, is called um, Media Development and ICTs. It looks at how best we can contribute to building the capacity of media players so they can use their platforms and their skills to advance development. We also work on health and development, and our health and development program looks at promoting equitable access to health services. So we raise awareness. We do advocacy work that breaks barriers to accessing health services. Mostly we focus on reproductive health and rights. And then we work on environment, which looks at promoting environmental sustainability, as well as good governance that looks at promoting citizen participation in governance activities. <laughs> My motivation is a very long story because it's very personal. Um, when I started as a, as a young girl, I used to work for an organization called Youth Net and Counseling. And the organization was mostly focusing on life skills development for, and rehabilitation for sex workers. So I was managing the program. That was my first job. So it's almost like I was thrown to the deep end of the pool. I didn't have much knowledge about life and life challenges. And I found myself making friends with the sex workers and understanding their lives and their challenges and how they deal with it. And I found in that process that I learned a lot. I was coming from college and then into this kind of job and I learned a lot from these women that I realized that life is not only what you learn in school, life is more about what you live. And it gave me a motivation to have the desire to make a difference, you know, to see people as people. Because the group of sex workers that I was working with at this time, they were highly marginalized. It was in Malawi, highly marginalized. They would be called names and people would ask me, why do you often, why are you often seen with these people? Like they are not equal people, you know? So that taught me a lot, especially when I would look at how much I learned from these women and their resilience and their desire to make a difference for the lives of their families and things like that. Then after two years of working this kind of work, I had another project that was looking at support to teenage mothers who had dropped out of school. And I was working with these girls to see how best I can reunite them with their families and find opportunities for them to go back to school. So that is where my motivation came from and that channeled the path of my career because all the time I still relate to where I started from and I want to continue doing work that actually empowers people, changes people's lives. Because in the process I learn a lot and I also change. One of the main, like one of the people that always I look back to and I find strength when I like move on with my life, when I live my life and I do my work, is my mother, which <laughs> sounds weird, but when I look at how, my mother married as a very young girl, and she worked so hard, she didn't have much education, but she worked to drive herself and answer the challenges of life. One of the things that I learned so much from my mother was she, all the children that have grown up in her home, she made sure that they value education, and they also learn how to live on their own, like to do housework, learn how to cook, how to wash and everything. So she sharpened all the children, her own and other people's children that lived in her house. And I find, I draw my inspiration when I just look at the way she has lived her life. Today, I can say that there are a number of leaders that we see around, so it's not like something that people would be too surprised to see, but it is not without challenges. Because generally people are still not used to having women as leaders. Women should at least be a run-up to some male figure that is leading. So it has its challenges. Sometimes you find that people undermine you just bef before they actually interact with you. Just because you are a woman, you get undermined. I remember one time we were bidding for a certain project. I will not mention the organization that we were bidding with. We submitted a proposal, they shortlisted it. When we went to discuss, so I went with one of the guys and the people, so I started by introducing myself and the organization and everything, and the people there just said, we really appreciate, but we are not doing administratives here, we want the architect of the proposal. And I was like, I wrote it. 
you know, and people were very surprised. So I started discussing what was in the proposal and what I, how I thought the methodology was going to work. And then the, one of the people that we were dealing with, I think he thought it was a compliment, said, you know, I'm impressed because when you first walked in, I thought you were a decorative piece in my face. I took offense because I thought that's not a compliment. I mean, you can't just assume that because I'm a woman, I don't know what I'm saying, or I just carry work that's been done by others, like I, ca I can't think. And then because you realize that I can think, you want to say, oh, wow, I'm impressed. Really? That's not a compliment. I am in a family of three children, I'm the eldest. My, I have a young brother and a young sister. But when there are big decisions in my family to be done today, in 2017, my father will wait for my brother to be there. Even if I am making the biggest financial contribution, my father will still wait for my brother. At a personal level, I, one of the successes that I celebrate myself is that um, I have been able to grow as a woman and mentor other girl, like girls who are also growing and learning about life. I do have an opportunity that I make a connection with certain girls and I have been able to contribute to their lives and see that people are actually growing and follow their lives. Some of them you lose touch, some of them I still follow what's going on and I get, I get satisfaction when I see that it's going on. I also pride myself in that I have a son who is 15, I only have one child and so far as an adolescent I can say that I've been able to pass on positive values of respect for women in him. One of the successes is that I always look my, at myself as having started at a very junior level and I've been able to work through to get to a leadership position to like head an organization, which is a very powerful achievement for myself. There are, a number, there are several challenges that women are facing when they advance in leadership positions, but one of the biggest challenges is just the social cultural environment is not conducive for women in leadership. So when you see women in like holding positions, people are trying to understand how did she make it there? And almost, most often, people will think she must have slept with someone who gave her an opportunity to do this, or that's what she does, and things like that, without even understanding your story, without questioning your abilities. There will always be some negative patch that everyone is looking for to attach to it because the, 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 the perceptions are that leadership is cut for men and a woman must have done something for them to ascend to that position.